welcome back to Citadel Station. Oh, damn it, I forgot all the lines. It's been like 20 years since I played System Shock. Give me a break. At least I tried to reference it. <laughs> well, that party was not for me, but that's okay. The uh, folks that invited me decided it wasn't for them either. <laughs> so, it didn't last very long, actually. Wow, that looks really weird. My uh, rear view mirror slash dash cam is doing something funky. Ah, whatever. Oh uh, yeah, so I, uh, it turns out I knew exactly where I was. Uh, oh shit, and where this was taking me. Huh, it is not 60 in here, it's 45. And uh, this part of town, I imagine the cops are, they're, uh, <laughs> they're not looking for speeders. <laughs> Orlando definitely has its good areas and its bad areas. I'm not going to say this is a bad area, but I'm also not going to say it's a good area. And yeah, we uh, we got there and it just seemed a bit too dodgy, so we're like, alright, fuck this, we're just going <clears> to... <throat> like they decided they were going to go meet up with some other people, and I was like, eh, I'm tired anyway, I'm going to bugger off. I think they were just going to go bar hopping and get pissed again since the whole party vibe didn't work out. So, eh, not into the bar scene. Eh, you know how that goes anyway. If you, for a person with my looks and my charm, sorry, uh, my best chances of uh, getting laid in the bar scene is to hang out until, you know how that goes, wait till 2 a.m., and there's some woman that's desperate to go home with anybody that eventually you just go, hi. Uh, yeah, I'm kidding. That doesn't actually happen. I mean, that does happen, but uh, I'm I'm slightly higher on the, on the reproductive food chain than that. I, I have never actually had to take home a drunk woman from a bar at closing time to get laid. I'm usually faster than that, and I can get her drunk by 11. <laughs> It's not that bad. And that wasn't my goal tonight anyway. Just felt like I should get out and socialize a bit. And when I do, I kill the party. <laughs> no, that didn't happen either. Where the fuck is that glare coming from? It's really bad. Hmm. Very curious. Well, whatever. So... Yeah, uh, tomorrow I'm going to be live streaming some more X3 because I can and because it's fucking fun and because you can't stop me. Uh, no, I had a good time here. Just it wasn't really my thing. And the nice thing about this car is, uh, you know, currently getting 44 and a half miles per gallon. So even. Well, it was only 20 miles to get here, so it's not a biggie. But getting, even getting back home, it'll burn less than a gallon of fuel. So the trip cost me like two dollars seventeen cents. So I'm not really. Uh... Oh, this is Conroy. Neat. IKEA's right over there. Damn, I didn't realize I came this far south. Yeah, live and learn. Uh, so what else? You know, on my my list of things to do before I die. <laughs> I still really need to take all those new guns I bought at that gun show last month. Well, two months ago now, since it's January 2021. Uh, I need to, like, take them out of their boxes and <laughs> take them to the range and put bullets in them and see if they, you know, work. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that you're supposed to do when you buy a gun, <laughs> make sure it can actually fire. Uh, I don't know why I've been putting that off. Oh, I know why I've been putting it off. It's I'm lazy. I'm lazy and I get tired on the weekends and end up getting distracted with other things. It's just not a priority in my head, so uh, I tend to shaft myself a little bit. <clears throat> I gotta stop doing that. But tomorrow, tomorrow is Saturday, and I will be live streaming because it's my plan. 
Sunday, I might go out and play with the guns, or I might stream some more. You never know. But it depends on what the mood, what mood strikes me. And therein lies the problem. <clears throat> if there's other stuff that interests me more than shooting guns, I'll do the other thing instead of going and shooting my guns. <clears throat> I need to kind of force myself to stop that. Maybe, maybe I have to schedule it, like actually put it on my calendar. Like, all right, dude, 10 o'clock Sunday morning, you're gonna drag your ass out of the house. Guns in hand, metaphorically, and uh, securely in a case, unloaded and safety. So, you know, don't come get me, cops. It's all legal. Then go shoot some guns. stay on this road. Why not take this nice fancy freeway that's up here? <clears throat> oh good, it does want me to go that way. Good. So otherwise I was going to declare the phone full of shit and go my own way anyway. <clears throat> Well, this way I can take the highway back instead of the uh, going up further north and taking the tollway. This is the route I should have come on um, in the first place. But, you know, I screwed up and Google screwed up. <clears throat> Got the signs wrong and uh, the rest is history. <clears throat> All sorts of fun stuff going on. I say that, and then I draw a complete blank as to what to talk about next. <laughs> oh, no, my uh, my friend who I was blathering about that I've, I've posted a couple times about now, just in the past week, uh, she kind of went AWOL Wednesday night and uh, hadn't heard from her for a couple days. Got a little worried, and uh, then she popped up a few hours ago. <clears throat> so, yay! It's crazy how, you know, I was in a good mood anyway while I was uh, streaming X3. And in general, I'm in pretty good mood most of the time anyway. But uh, as soon as she pinged, I just lit up like a like a 10-year-old that just got to just recharge his favorite toy. Uh, it's crazy what the heart will make you do and how it makes, how it can... Uh, make you feel towards people and behave like a, a goddamn Pavlov's dog that girl can just say hi to me and get me uh, all a flutter <sighs> and it's crazy you don't have any control over it either you just it, it, she is the last person that I would have ever expected to have this happen with and uh you know, it's, it's partly because, and that's what made it so silly to me, uh, that my uh, you know, ex-wife acted so jealous, because it's like, dude, that's not going to happen. We don't even think of each other like that, and I guess it's just the matter of her putting the idea in our heads and then taking off, leaving me in a lurch by myself. Kind of just sort of put us together a little bit. I don't, you know, I haven't really talked to her about how, uh, my, my friend that is. I don't give a shit what my ex-wife thinks. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I suppose she and I need to eventually, again, my friend and I need to have an honest discussion about all of this and what we both think of each other and that sort of thing. And all sorts of flirting and all sorts of uh, innuendo and and you know she didn't she didn't shy away while I was there. If I you know I leaned in for a quick kiss and she gave you know she didn't fight that she kissed back and gave her a hug and she hugged back really tight. But I grabbed her hand for a second she she held it back and squeezed tight. So there's something there. Wow, they're moving fast. 
you know, I guess I don't need to worry too much about speeding in here because uh, there are plenty of people doing it more than me. <clears throat> oh, balls. Where is he? Okay, that can do that. Okay, this is the new exit. I don't think I've taken this before. Okoe and Titusville. Fucking Titusville. You know, that girl that I was engaged to back in 2009, 2010, <clears throat> when she broke up with me, um, well, it was because she was either fucking or getting ready to start fucking the uh, bass player in her, in her band that she had joined about six months prior. Um, and, you know, it's the same shit. You know, when, whenever a girl leaves you and says, oh, no, no, it's not another guy. Bullshit. It's another guy. But, uh, so her crazy ass, she moved out to Titusville, Florida, which is near Cape Canaveral and, you know, NASA, where they launch the shuttles and all that shit. Um, and obviously she moved out there because she wanted to be closer to him, and she also didn't want to move back home with her father. For obvious reasons, because, you know, she, uh, she can't fuck around whenever she wants if uh, dad's home. <laughs> Take, take it from me, from experience. That really cramps thing. It cramps your style. Um, but, uh, you know, when you're you're banging a girl in, in her house and you're not sure when her dad's coming home, that's a little awkward. <sighs> but, um, so yeah, she moved out to Titusville. But she didn't get her own place. She moved into this, what I can only describe as a fucking hippie commune. I'm not even kidding. It was like this compound with 10 or 12 people living in it. It was a bunch of houses all together or buildings. It was something weird. And she, the weird thing is she bitched to me about it. No, she wasn't, you know, suggesting it was my fault or anything. But she just, you know, for, for a couple of months after she left, we were at least cordial. Uh, up until she got tired of me grousing publicly about, you know, getting dumped. And she decided, you know, if you want to keep, my, if you want to keep our friendship, then you gotta, you gotta stop saying things in public. I'm like, fuck you, fuck your friendship. Get the fuck out. And, you know, that was about the end of that. And, um, yeah, but before that, she was bellyaching about how dumb this whole thing was with this, with this commune thing. And I'm, I'm just sitting there thinking... You're the one that got into it, dummy. How could you possibly think that hippies are even re remotely reasonable to live with? Hippies are insufferable. They're, they're utterly ridiculous and stupid. Half of them were vegan. The other half were vegetarian. She was not. You can guess how well that went over. And, you know, it's a fucking commune, so you know there's an expectation of uh, lots of sex. There's almost no notion of privacy. So I bet that this, I, I bet that kind of cramped her style too. She was thinking that she could bring her uh, her boy over, her man rather. Her, that dude was older than me. I think he was fucking 42, and she was uh, 19. So she had a taste for the older men. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I'm sure she expected to be able to bring him over and fool around with him in private <laughs> and, um, you know, not have him propositioned by other women. And I'm sure she expected to not get propositioned by the other men living on that compound. And I get the feeling that's not what happened. But from what I remember, she didn't end up staying there very long. That was kind of silly. I have no idea why I started on that topic, or that tangent. God, it's hard to believe that shit was 10 years ago. Almost 11 years ago now. I guess they do say that you, um, the ones that you really felt something for are the ones you tend to miss. And uh, unique as she was, I do miss her. Yeah, it's weird. I still think about her, but I, except when I'm pissing and moaning about something related to my divorce, I don't really think of my 
current soon-to-be ex-wife at all. I don't miss her in the slightest. It's weird that I don't even feel guilty for that. I feel like I should. Because I was, I was with her almost ten years. Well, nine years, I guess. Married six and a half. You'd think it, should, it would mean something. But, eh, I guess it really didn't. Thank God we ended it before the seventh year. Because that's when she can uh, become eligible for... Uh, lifelong alimony. Nothing like handing over a part of your income for the rest of your goddamn life to a selfish bitch that cheated on you. <clears throat> uh, wow, I guess the bitterness is pretty strong there, isn't it? Eh. Uh. home, I think I'm going to uh, get caught up on managing the NAS and the big pile of torrents I've got to download. <laughs> I did some math, and I think I've got about 18 terabytes of stuff queued up to download. I'm really glad I don't have any bandwidth caps. <laughs> and the scary part is, I think I'm getting pretty close to filling up the NAS. And remember, it's got... Uh, what is it? 140 minus 28. 100. I want to say it's 104 terabytes of storage. <laughs> it's almost full. <laughs> uh, nothing like being a pack rat. <clears throat> but, you know, there are lots of uh, websites now that are taking down all of their content because they, uh, they're they worried about getting fucked by the credit card processors. Incidentally, that, that reminds me, total change of subject, well, kind of change of subject, uh, there is a, I'm actually going to put a link to it in the description for this video, uh, you can make a comment, and you should, it's uh, one of the, I forget which regulatory body it is, but it's uh, part of Congress, or no, sorry, it's part of the executive branch of the U.S. government. They are soliciting feedback and comments from the public through January 4th about a new proposal uh, to regulate banks, credit unions, and financial institutions, payment processors, all that sort of thing, requiring them, and this is a good thing, I promise, requiring them <clears throat> to provide access to their services, equal access to their services, um, to any and all legal businesses that are operating within the law and are engaged in legal activities, regardless of the personal palatability of those activities in the eyes of the bank or the payment processor. In other words, if you're a legal business and you're doing legal things, like, say, running an internet forum, fucking Visa and MasterCard under these regulations can't just come up and say, well, fuck you, we don't like what you post, so we're not letting you, we're not going to process any of your payments, so you can't use credit cards on your site for support or donations. Now, that's horseshit. I don't really care what kind of libertarian bullshit you want to throw at me about, well, they're a private company, they can do what they want. Fuck that. When they've got a monopoly on something that everybody uses, bull fucking shit. That is an utter load of horseshit. Um, and I, I completely disagree with the notion that, well, it's their network, they can do what they want. Well, you know, if it didn't cost a few fucking billion dollars to build your own network, and a few billion more to convince, you know, anybody to use it, it might be a different story. But, no, there, there's just a few little hurdles you got to jump over if you don't like how Visa and MasterCard do business. So, no, fuck that. It's a, it's a bog-standard way of doing business. It's something that every company expects to be able to do. And to deny access to that simply because you don't like what some of a business's customers have to say, and because the business won't censor their customers the way you want them to, fuck everything about that. And uh, the same thing with banks and credit unions, although credit unions tend not to be too much of a, uh, oh shit, 
Wow, that was something on the road there. They don't tend to be dicks about it as bad as banks do. I'll never understand actually why more businesses don't do their banking with a credit union instead of a bank. It freaks me the fuck out that Kiwi Farms is tied to a Wells Fargo account. My God, that's fucking scary. They're one of the most evil banks on earth. But anyway, um, uh, 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 well, yeah, so banks won't really do business with Kiwi Farms either. Uh, Kiwi Farms does nothing illegal at all, literally. <laughs> It, the, there are no crimes committed on that site, and nothing illegal is ever posted there. Seriously. It's not hate speech, because no such thing exists in the United States, according to the Supreme Court. Suck it. <clears throat> and, um, you know, there's no hate speech posted there. There's no, there's nothing illegal about posting publicly accessible information about somebody. In other words, doxing. Doxing's not illegal. Suck it up. And um, the only other thing that people on Kiwi Farms do is post honest and sometimes brutal opinions about people that really should know better than to behave the way they do. And they mock stupid people. That's really it. And um, Visa and MasterCard straight up said, no, we're not going to accept payments for you, for you people. We don't like it. And several banks have told the uh, the guy that runs it, uh, Joshua Null, oh, it's not Null, Joshua Moon, great guy. Never gotten the chance to talk to him by voice or online, just, you know, a couple, uh, you know, messages back and forth is it, but um, I've seen some of his podcasts or, and uh, live streaming. He's a great guy. And he's even upfront about it, say, look, you know, I know you guys think I'm fighting this big free speech battle and blah, 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 but... I'm really running the site at this point just out of sheer stubbornness. And, you know, I think free speech is important, but if uh, if I can't really pay the bills and this place stops being profitable, I'm going to have to shut it down. Incidentally, I now donate 100 bucks a month to Kiwi Farms. I have never in my life paid that kind of money to keep an internet forum going. But fuck it. You ban people like me off of Twitter, this is what happens. You haven't gotten rid of my ideas. You haven't destroyed me. You haven't silenced me. Now I'm, I can afford to put my money where my mouth is to preserve my right to speak and others' rights to speak. So, uh, you know, that's how this shit goes. The, uh, but, I mean, yeah, the, the tactic is usually just kick people off the common platforms and say, go make your own. And when they do, make it impossible for those uh, those other forums to function. And uh, sometimes, every once in a while, you can't actually do it. And the alternate platform stays up. And you would not believe how much that pisses people off that are used to just being able to cancel anybody they hate. And this whole thing with Visa and MasterCard and banks not doing business with, uh, you know, Offendatron branded businesses... Uh, this, that's what's got the government considering regulating it so that banks don't get a fucking choice. And I agree with that idea. Banking, this is essentially access to the financial system, period. If you don't have access to these basic services, you cannot operate as a business. And there is no excuse for that when you're trying to operate a completely legal business. It's inexcusable, and it, it really bugs me that these stupid companies had that kind of power in the first place. Corporations are way too powerful around the world and in the United States, and they are in desperate need of a spanking and a defanging. Mother of God, that woman was gorgeous. Holy shit. I wonder if she charges by the hour. <laughs> That is an itch I need to get scratched, I suppose. But, eh. I've gone years without before, so... It's not like it'll kill me to wait longer. <clears throat> I'm hoping I can, uh, you know, take care of that problem in the next few months here, but... now eh, whatever. That's what I get for not going out too much. Fucking Shaolin shakes aren't making it easier either. 
Well, I'm home. Enough babbling. I'm going to put a link in the description about that uh, uh, link to comments. Or, you know, they want you to comment on this uh, before the 4th of January. If you live in the U.S., please comment and express your support for the idea of regulating banks and credit card processors such that they cannot refuse access to their services and platforms to a law-abiding law business just because they don't like what the business does. Incidentally, in case you think this only affects uh, those dirty alt-right Nazi forums where people say mean things, this is also hitting all those marijuana businesses right in the nuts. As it turns out, banks won't do business with marijuana companies because at a federal level, marijuana is still illegal. And banks and credit card processors are all scared shitless that even if they only operate with marijuana businesses in states where it's legal, the feds are going to stomp their feet and come down on the banks and the processors. So, you have a legal weed grow operation or uh, a legal dispensary that hands out completely legal uh, weed, legally, uh, you can't get a bank account. They won't do business with you. You want to talk weird situations. The um, You think a casino has a lot of cash? Uh, try marijuana businesses, like grower, uh, growers especially. They can't, they can't use banks. So they've got tighter fucking security than a lot of big casinos do. Lots of people with guns. And they've got just rooms filled with cash. Bigger than a bank or bigger than a casino has. It's crazy. And that's the kind of shit that I think we should stop. And uh, as much as I'm not a fan of adding more regulation to things, I really do think that it's, it's necessary in this case. Because if we don't do something, a handful of companies are just going to end up dictating what we can talk about, who we can associate with, and whether or not we can buy that sweet, sweet ganja. <laughs> so, all right, guys, that's it for me again. So uh, stay tuned. I'll see you tomorrow for more X3. And uh, until then, have a good night. Take care.